The story sets off an art class. A task is handed to the students where they will have to draw an unforgettable moment. Moreover, our main character has so many such instances, but one of them stands out from all the others, which is about the 12-year-old, Yoon Ju Won. Later, a lady welcomes Yoon Sun and her daughter Ju Won into the house. There, the lady appears to be flattered with how mature Ju Won is at such a young age and wishes for her son, Seo Ha, to be the same. The lady then asks Yoon Sun about her secret for raising Jo Won to be like she is. And in response, Yoon Sun mentions that Jo Won was born like this. Later, Ju Won is wandering around the palace and she appears to have heard from somewhere that the owner of this house is a CEO's son. Moreover, Ju Won realizes that her family is rich, but not as much as this one. While she is roaming around, Ju Won comes across Seoha trying to reach out for a book, but due to his short height, he is unable to. Thereupon, Ju Won decides to play with Seoha and soon proceeds to make her way to him. Ju Won then asks Seoha if he needs some help with the book, to which Seoha replies that he can carry out his work by himself while referring to Ju Won as a pumpkin. Ju Won then soon tries to reach out for a book and in the process intentionally drops it over Seoha. Shortly after, Seoha makes his way to his mother where he complains about Ju Won intentionally dropping a book on him. However, the mother refuses to believe Seoha. Meanwhile, Ju Won looks over at Seoha and starts making strange faces and giving him stares, which leads Seoha to not complain about her anymore as he starts feeling threatened. Thereupon, Yeonsen even asks Ju Won if she intentionally dropped a book on Seoha, to which Jo Won decides to not answer. Later, Ju Won and Seoha start having a go at each other once again, and thereupon, Ju Won picks up a toy truck. She then, in a threatening way, warns Seoha not to tell his mom that she intentionally dropped the book while crushing the toy truck in her hands. Seoha appears to be getting scared and starts considering Ju Won, a witch with how she was looking at him, all scary. Later, the mother is warning Seoha to stop calling Ju Won names. However, Seoha tries to make his mom understand that Ju Won is scary. Furthermore, Seoha mentions to his mom that he hates Ju Won even more than his father, to which the mother somewhat grapples with the gravity of the situation. Later, as Yoon Sun is driving back home along with Ju Won, she inquires to Ju Won if she has made things up with Seoha, to which Ju Won confirms that she did talk with him. Turns out that Ju Won is finding excitement in this situation, as for her, dealing with kids like Seoha is quite easy as she knows them too well. The next day, Ju Won goes back to Seoha's house where she announces her arrival and starts looking for him. However, Seoha keeps himself hidden, as he seems to be scared of Jo Won. Jo Won soon notices Seoha hiding and asks him if he believes that she is a witch, to which Seoha confirms that he does. Furthermore, Jo Won advises Seoha to not believe in such fantasies, and soon mentions to him that although she is not a witch, she has a secret. Ju Won then asks Seoha if she can tell him her secret, and it's a secret that Ju Won cannot tell to anyone. She then asks Seoha if he is aware of what a past life is, and soon mentions that she remembers her past life. Ju Won then asks Seoha if he can become interesting for her, if she tells him and proceeds to mention that she began living her 18th life. Ju Won suddenly becomes aware of the fact that she is different when she is around 10 years old, and in a flash, everything appears before her. Moreover, while being only 8 to 12 years old, she started recalling everything, and in her 18th life, Ju Won gets incarnated into a wealthy family for the first time in a long while, and thus, she thinks that she should just live quietly, since opportunities like this don't come so often. Moreover, Ju Wan realizes that the best thing in this world is money, and thus she decides to befriend Seoha since he is richer than her. Thereupon, Ju Wan mentions to Seoha that she wants to develop good relations with him and asks him to not be scared of her. In response, Seoha conveys to Ju Wan that he is not scared of her and that there is nothing scary about her either, to which Ju Wan proceeds to lean in closer to Seoha. 
She then asks him why his heart begins pounding rapidly when she is close to him, and asks him if he likes her. Seoha is swift in his response as he declines Ju Wan's statement and mentions that there is nothing like that. Soon, their parents arrive there. Due to the loud noises, and thereupon, just when Juwan is about to mention that Seoha likes her, Seoha covers her mouth. Days pass by, and Juwan pays a daily visit to Seoha in his house. On one day, Seoha inquires to Juwan as to why she keeps coming to his house every other day. In response, Juwan states that she likes coming to his house and tells him that she likes spending time with him. As their conversation progresses further, in one instance, Ju Wan refers to Seoha as a kid, to which he immediately shows annoyance and asks Ju Wan not to call him a kid anymore. Seoha then reveals to Ju Wan that his mother overdoes herself just because he is a child, and since he does not like the fact that he is a child, he doesn't like to be called a kid. Thereupon, Ju Wan assures Seoha that she won't be referring to him as a kid anymore. Later, Ju Wan even brings her sister and begins playing with her without giving much attention to Seoha. Thereupon, Ju Wan performs a magic trick in front of Seoha, leaving him shocked. After this day, many days pass by and Ju Wan doesn't come to visit Seoha. One day, Ju Wan visits Seoha once again and soon inquires him as to why he has an upset expression. Seoha denies anything like that, and in response, Ju Wan asks him if he is upset because she didn't come to visit him for many days, to which Seoha denies once again. However, Ju Wan soon reveals to Seoha that since she is on vacation now, she will come to visit him more often, which immediately gives Seoha a sense of relief and Ju Wan notices it. Shortly after, they hear a noise from Seoha's mother and soon go over to check it out. Thereupon, the mother appears to be on bed rest and seems to be sick. The mother then inquires to Ju Wan if she is a little frightened with the situation to which Ju Wan conveys that Seoha appears to be more frightened than her. Thereupon, the mother asks Ju Wan to take care of Seoha and to come visit him from time to time as he needs to develop his communication skills. Jo Wan, with no objections, agrees since she realizes that this is the purpose of her reincarnated life, and she is aware that Seoha's mother has little time left to live. A few days after, Seoha's mother passes away, and at her funeral, Seoha and Jo Wan share a hug. After that day, Jo Wan starts avoiding Seoha completely as she realizes that she was the one who leaned in to hug Seoha first and realizes that she has already started liking him. Jo Wan meets with Seoha while it is raining heavily and he appears to be soaking wet. Thereupon, Jo Wan inquires to Seoha if he has been standing there all alone by himself, to which Seoha replies that he was there with the housekeeper, but she went away. Thereupon, Seoha proceeds to show Ju Wan her own magic trick, which he has been practicing all this time. Soon, as Seoha shows Ju Wan the magic trick, she gets extremely flattered. And thereupon, Seoha proposes something stranger to her. Seoha abruptly asks Ju Wan to get married, and she immediately agrees to do so. However, she soon realizes that she has unconsciously made a decision and hopes that she will not regret it later. Ju Wan hopes that Seoha will forget about such childish promises when they grow up. Ju Wan realizes that she becomes just like an actual 12-year-old when she is around Seoha. Meanwhile, Ju Wan is trying her best to forget about the promise that she just made, but it keeps coming back to her. So she abruptly asks Seoha to forget about the getting married promise when they grow up. Later that day, Yunsun receives a phone call from Seoha, who mentions her desire to go to the amusement park on his birthday, but reveals that no one can accompany him. Soon, Ju Wan inquires to Yunsun about the subject of the recent phone call, and Yunsun explains it all. Ju Wan then immediately volunteers to accompany Seoha on his visit to the amusement park and assures Yunsen that she will take good care of him. Since Yunsen is aware that Juo Wan is much more adult compared to her age, she agrees with her proposition. Later, as Juo Wan and Seoha are making their way to the amusement park, 
Ju Wan inquires him about the reason for him acting stubbornly with her intentionally. Soon, Seoha reveals to Ju Wan that he promised her mother that he would go to the amusement park with her on his birthday. Moreover, Seoha's mother promises to stay healthy until then, but things do not turn out as they are supposed to. Ju Wan then asks Seoha if he has brought his mother to, which Seoha confirms that he did and takes out a photo frame of his mother. Furthermore, Seoha reveals to Ju Wan that he also told his mother about them getting married and mentions that his mother agrees as well. Moreover, Seoha believes that his mother might remember it when she is reborn. Soon, something unexpected and unfortunate occurs, and the car they are in collides with another one, thus resulting in a drastic accident, which in turn takes their lives. In her last breaths, Ju Won promises Seoha that she will remember him in her next life, and that is how Ju Won's 18th life ends. In the next scene, Ju Won encounters an old man who appears to find her very interesting. Upon being asked if it is her second life, Ju Won reveals to the old man that it isn't. She then proceeds to move closer to the old man and whispers in his ears that it is her 19th life, leaving him frightened. Moreover, as promised, Juwan appears to remember Seoha in this life and wonders if he remembers her as well. Jium Ban is Juwan's name in her 19th life. Moreover, in most of her past lives, she has tried to blend in and lead a quiet life. But this time, she has done something different and has decided to stand out from the crowd. For starters, Everyone in the company knows who Jiyun Ban is, and she appears to be very famous as well. Furthermore, many known companies have been trying to recruit Ban to work with them as well. There are a few reasons as to why Ban has decided to stand out like this, and the first thing that she thought when her memories came back was that it was not at all going to be easy for her this time. Ban's mom left her when she was four. Her dad was an alcoholic and her brother was completely out of control. And there was this seemingly insurmountable obstacle, which was poverty. Ban believes that these circumstances are too harsh compared to her past life, as she has gone from living in a two-story mansion to a tiny rooftop dump. Moreover, Ban made most of all the skills she had honed over the years, and now she has accomplished in becoming a successful woman. But there is a problem and that is that she still hasn't managed to meet Seoha properly. This has made Ban realize how difficult it is for two people to meet, especially when they come from two completely different backgrounds. Turns out that as soon as Seoha graduated from college, he went abroad and hasn't been back to Korea since then. Well, he has been back a few times, but since he is the chairman's son and has a busy schedule all day, Ban hasn't found the right time or means to meet Seoha. Moreover, Bana believes that she will be able to pick up some news in the company where she has been working for two years, and it is owned by Seoha's family. Furthermore, Ban has heard that Seoha is working overseas. However, he has no plans of returning anytime soon. She doesn't appear to know about Seoha any more than that in this life, and wonders if she should leave the country to go meet him. Later, Ban appears to be talking to the manager of her company about her transfer to their office in Germany, to which the manager reveals to Ban that they only take seniors there. Thereupon, one of the employees asks the manager why he is talking nicely to her. In response, he mentions that since other companies are looking to recruit Ban as she is very talented, their company wouldn't want to lose such a talented employee. Later, while Ban is heading home, she thinks about how difficult it is for her to meet Seoha and wonders if she should just hand over the notice and leave for Germany. However, she seems to be skeptical and wonders as to what she is even going to say when she comes across him. Ban, moreover, wonders if she wants to see him again and appears to be unsure if it is just her obsession to see Seoha one more time or if she is just worried about him. Moreover, Ban recalls how the only reason she was able to be reborn this quickly was because she wanted to meet Seoha in her next life. Soon, 
Mr. Li, a representative of Dehuan Company, approaches Ban. Thereupon, Li mentions to Ban that he did not come to see her at her house, as it would seem like he is stalking to, which Ban tauntingly mentions that coming across her while she is heading home is still stalking. Thereupon, Li inquires to Ban if she is not at all interested in his offer of joining Dehuan Company, too, which Ban confirms that she is not. Turns out that the sole reason why Ban is still working at Mi Group is because she wants to meet Seoha. Soon Ban proceeds to leave, and Li receives a message from Dehun Kim, where he informs Li that Seoha is coming back to Korea. Furthermore, Juwon's sister is shown to have received the same text as well. Later that day, Ban arrives at her office to give in her letter of resignation and soon discovers that Seoha will be coming back to Korea, and this time for good. This marks an exciting moment for Ban, as she has now finally found a way to meet Seoha again.